Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am literally up so early filming this because I filmed this entire thing and then it was blurry. So I don't know what my camera was up to, but we're back and we're talking about electric forest today. If you are new to this channel, you probably don't know that I don't usually sit down and do videos like this very often. All my videos are very on the go, um, but I'm sitting down today to talk about electric forest. I just want to talk a little bit about the good things, the not so good things and answer the question, will I go again? So with that being said, what's up? Welcome back. I'm Al Crew. This is the Adventure Vlog. Um, I'm going to start with the things that I feel like I wasn't obsessed with, and then we'll end on a high note. I feel like first things first, we have to address the elephant in the room. Where were the umbrellas? <laughs> if you've never been to Electric Forest, there's a walkway in between one of the main stages and the actual forest where you enter all the trees. And usually, for at least the past four years, this was my fifth forest, um, this is the first year with no... Um, umbrellas in the overhang of the walkway. A friend of mine said that potentially this was in order to keep a good aerial view of the entire forest um, and the umbrellas would have blocked that after everything that went down at the gorge and just for you know general safety but at the same time I feel like aerial view of the forest would suck anyway because you can't really see through the trees like in all the aerial pictures you see of electric forest you can't see down underneath like in through the trees anyway so I feel like I don't know what their thought process was there, but if you can, bring back the umbrellas. It is an electric forest staple. This bone to pick has nothing to do with the festival itself. It was so freaking hot. I would just say if you're not good in inescapable heat, definitely consider RVs or Good Life or somewhere that you're going to have more access to air conditioning. I could not be in that tent, y'all. I would wake up sweating and then I was inescapable from there. Literally, I could not change in the tent. I could not pack, unpack anything out of the tent because... Literally, it was so hot and I was it was like oh, kind of overwhelming. For whatever reason, it felt even hotter this year than in the record-breaking heat years. And I don't know why, but literally, I could, like, please shove me into a lake. Which is a good segue to my next point of the fact that they are not allowing re-entry, for GA at least. In all the previous years, my camp has left during the day and gone to the lake which is like 20 minutes away from the festival just to jump in rinse off cool down because again we're ga so we don't have any access to air conditioning or anything like that and this year as soon as security stops us and it's like just so you know even with your car pass you will not be able to re-enter if you leave the festival grounds what like to some extent i understand for safety and stuff but if they're going to recheck your car anyway, just like they normally would, you'd go through security all over again. So what is what is the point? It felt a little limiting because that's four days. And I'm sure they'd let you leave for like emergencies, but it just sort of like rubbed me the wrong way that like GA is not allowed to leave. But I think if you're like in group camp or any of the other camps, that you're allowed to leave and come back. And I just felt like that was a little bogus, especially being that in the past, it was never an issue. Y'all, I am struggling with this focus, so I just need y'all to be patient with me. Anyway, let's talk about the sound at Tripoli this year. Why did it suck? <laughs> I feel like Tripoli is literally like a main stage and we're at a music festival. But anything behind like the second set of speakers, you could barely hear anything. My friends and I kind of posted up in the back over there for quite a few sets. Um, just because it's an easy place to find each other and we, we knew like the meetup spot and I just felt like I couldn't hear anything. One of my absolute favorite artists that I was really excited to see was Dr. Fresh. It's Dr. Fresh. Big shout out to Live in Large with L Crew. And I felt like I had to run away from my friends and go make new friends at the front and dance with other people up there because I couldn't hear anything where we were we were hanging out. I also want to talk about the lines at the Dream Emporium. I will touch on the Dream Emporium a little bit later in the positive end of things section but it was really hard to get into some of those rooms because of the lines and my I'm taking full responsibility for not prioritizing my time that way but there's so much to see in the forest and you only get four days I understand that it's limited space but I'm just wondering if there's a way that they can move people quicker or keep it open longer during the day so that more people can access it uh, because I just feel like there was a lot that I still didn't get the chance to see and I think the last thing I'm going to touch on for the like not so amazing side of things is the fact that the forest was closing so early 
what? What was up with that? In past years, the forest would stay open till like 3, 4 a.m. I felt like Sunday I understand because they're trying to get everyone out at the end of the weekend. But literally the first night where we have all this energy and we're excited to be there, ground control is kicking us out at like 1.30. And I even asked, I was like, what is up with that? She's like, well, you can go back to camp. That's why we have the afters. I'm like, but the afters are not in the forest. Switching over to the positive things because we want to end on a high note. Obvious that water was $1. In the past, I usually, okay, I'm not even going to pretend. My friends usually carry camel bags. So they just fill up their water packs and I get to drink for free out of their water. God bless all of you because I know you're watching. Um, but this year, I feel like there was a, a lot more times where we went up and bought water just because you're in the middle of a crowd or whatever, and water is $1, a bottle of $1. I have been to so many festivals and clubs and shows and things where literally a 10-ounce freaking Fiji is like $12, and I'm like, so you'd rather me die on the dance floor? Is that what you're telling me? Anyway, the fact that water was $1, I feel like it really is the spirit of the forest, just everyone's taking care of each other, and the fact that they were able to do that and not be profiting on literally water, like, I really appreciated that because really it's a safety thing, and you want everyone to be safe and healthy in that environment, and... Another thing that I actually love about the forest is that it changes every year. This was my fifth forest, and there were still things that I was discovering that were new. It really keeps every year, every experience a unique one if you went for the last five years like me it really is a unique experience every year where there's new things to explore new art installations the stages are different the layout is different and i just really appreciate that because i think it makes it so beautiful that it won't be the same exact experience every year which is another great segue to talking about the dream emporium formerly known as the hangar the dream emporium is just this giant structure uh, full of surprises and interactive activities and um, gets you in the shade gets you out of the sun and just a ton of fun things to discover places to hang out with your friends and I loved it. Well, I did love the hangar and everything that the hangar had to offer in years past, the Dream Emporium like totally switched it up. And it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of beautiful things to explore. While the lines were very long for a lot of the rooms and, and interactive experiences, there was a lot of other great things to see. The alien karaoke, there was the scavenger hunt going on in there. There was um, a like a boxing ring where you could literally sit down and watch people duel. Just fun, fun, exciting things uh, and uh, interactive ways to connect with people. This year they had this thing called the Erotic Blueprint, which is basically, there was five different tents set up throughout the forest, each one symbolizing like a different blueprint. And basically it was just, um, you would take this quiz and learn about what your, which blueprint you fit into. And it's basically learning about how you show up in intimate spaces. And it was just like a cool learning experience. We got to talk a little bit about um, things that are sort of taboo. And I just really appreciate that because if anything, that's where it thrives is in the forest, right? And it was just cool to be able to learn that and explore that with your partner or with your friends or even by yourself, you were able to go in and, and learn about these things. So definitely would love to see that and things like that again in the forest. And I think the last thing that I really wanted to comment on, which was very specific to my experience, is that this year my group had a lot of forest virgins with us, a lot of first timers, a lot of people who had never experienced the forest before. And because of that, I felt like I really took on this role of leader again. And I I haven't um, I haven't acted in that role in a while in my life. And so to awaken that in me again felt really, it was rewarding. And I feel like, again, that is such the spirit of the forest, is learning about yourself, reawakening parts of yourself that you haven't activated in a while or didn't even know existed. It's all about, you know, bringing in that child within bringing forth that child within and for me this year it looked like acting as a leader in a lot of ways again i just want to pop in here really quick and talk about my podcast i have a podcast posted a new episode recently you can always find that link through the description in every single one of my videos it's very different than what i do here it's very much more scream of consciousness whatever i want to talk about sort of thing it's available everywhere you get your podcast so make sure to check that out as well so if it isn't obvious i think the answer to the question below in the title is yes, I will definitely be attending Forest again. I will do what I can to make it happen every single year. It is my favorite place in the world. Even with all the changes and things that are not so wonderful all of the time, it really is an, a magical place. And so if Electric Forest, if you're watching this, hire me to be on your team. 
We'll, we'll make all the wonderful changes together. Thank you everyone for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. About like 90 to 95% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. So I would really appreciate it if you just click that subscribe button. It's easy, it's free, it's a great way to support the channel and um, support my dreams. So yeah, if you have not experienced the forest for yourself, I highly encourage you. Do what you can to make it happen and keep living large and I'll catch you on the flip. Um, and I'm sweating, so I think I'm going to stop filming now. Woohoo!